Good morning. Good morning. What a bright sunny morning. Uh, for those coming in, welcome. This is indeed another day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. So I'll ask us to please rise. And as we rise, Psalm 40, uh, Isaiah 42 verse 6 says, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeons, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. And this morning we sing, open the eyes of our hearts so that we may see the Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out, pour out your power and love, as we sing holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see. I want to see you open the eyes open the eyes of my heart Lord open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you to see you high and lifted see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power, power and love, as we sing holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power, power and love, as we sing holy, holy, holy. He is holy, 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 I want to see you, holy, 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 to see you, to see you high and lifted, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power, power and love, as we sing holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Amen. 
Indeed, God is good and His mercy endureth forever. You are good, Lord. You are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Sing, Lord, you are good, Lord. You, Lord, your mercy endureth forever. And people from every nation, people from every nation, and tribe, from generation to generation, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. And we say, You are good. Indeed, Lord, you are good. And your mercy endure forever. Let's sing together. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Sing, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. And people from every nation, both from every nation and tribe, from generation to generation, we worship. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. So good, so good. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are, let's sing together, you are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Tuasema asante kwa mungu wetu. Nasema asante kwa wema wako. Kwa maana fadhili zako za dumu milele na milele. Amina. We thank God for his mercies that endure forever. I'm sure each of us in one way or the other can attest to how God has been gracious I mean, the fact that we are gathered here, we are a community that is here on the, on, the, on the basis of God's grace and mercy. By his mercy, we are a people who are not a people. 
initially. So we thank, we thank God. Nasema sante kwa mungu wangu. Nasema sante kwa wema wako. Kwa mana fadhili zako zadumu. Milele na milele. Nasema sante, nasema sante kwa mungu wangu. Nasema sante kwa wema wako, kwa mana fadhili zako zadumu. Milele na milele, amina. Nitaimba sifa zako Nitaimba sifa zako Mbele ya watu wote Nitaimba sifa zako Mbele ya watu wote Kwa mana fadhili Zako za dumu Milele na milele Amina Nitaimba, nitaimba sifa zako Mbele ya watu wote Nitaimba sifa zako Mbele ya watu wote Kwa mana fadhili Zako za tunu Nilele na nilele Amina Kwa mana Kwa mana fadhili Zako za dumu Milele na milele Amina Kwa mana Kwa mana fadhili Zako za dumu Milele na milele Forsaken, I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again, amazing love, amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It is my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven, because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were content, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because 
Jesus, you died and rose again. Amazing love, amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. Joy to honor you. Amazing love, how can it be? Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, amazing love, no, it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. All I do, in all I do, I honor you. In all I do, I honor you. You are my king. You are my king. Jesus. Says you are my king. Amazing love, amazing love. How can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. joy to honor you in all I do in all I do I honor you in all I do in all I do I honor you you may have your seats good morning Morning, LVC. Yes, my name is Sonny, and today I'll be the service coordinator. Um, wow, we bless the Lord for this amazing day. The sun is here. I remember in April we were, we were praying, like, when will the sun be out? Today it is out. So bear with us. If uh, it is more that you can handle, please get a shade somewhere. Okay? Do we have visitors visiting us for the first time, or this is your second time? Just raise your hand. Yes, we have them. Let's appreciate them. Let's welcome them. We can do better than that, church. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much for visiting us today. We really uh, love visitors, and um, we would want to invite you after the service. We have our, our welcome desk just right on my left, and uh, we are able to meet you and uh, if you need to know more about the church uh, that is the best place we'll get more uh, information so um, ushers I would uh, invite you to pass the uh, offering basket and as the ushers are passing the the offering basket I would just want to uh, encourage us to also give towards the mission and vision of our church and um, just also uh, bring this to us. Like uh, we have our our giving platform is now live. Uh, what you need is just to scan the QR code, uh, which is on your song sheet uh, in the giving section. And there are various ways that uh, we can give, which is available. We have um, M-Pesa, cards, PayPal, uh, and also Bonga Point. Uh, you can use that to just worship uh, with through giving. And also just a reminder that the m till number is still working and also uh, the bank transfer. So there are very many ways that we can uh, give uh, uh, to the church. Um, our second uh, announcement will be 
We'll be having our second membership uh, class, which will be on May 28th from 12 to 2 p.m. And just to know that lunch will be provided as well as childcare. So kindly sign up and we'll be happy to have you there. Then the Kamae Girls uh, Boso visit will be on 27th May. Kindly sign up at the welcome desk to get more information uh, if you love to visit uh, the girls. Also, due to the changes that is happening here at Amani Gardens, we would want to uh, ask parents to kindly help us prevent children from running to the grass. And if we can confine them at least in this space as they are working, there are so many work going on, that will be really appreciated, especially for the grass area, if we can keep them off that side. Um, parents also be advised that uh, as we continue with our series of songs of song salmon series, like there are some adult content, uh, kindly advise if uh, the youth or children will be remaining at the service, uh, that you may help just advise, uh, have that. <clears throat> at this time, I would want to invite uh, Graham to come and uh, give us an update on the kids come. Thank you, let's appreciate him. Wow, an appreciation for coming to notice. That's amazing. What a friendly church. Um, the sun is a blessing. Not if you forgot to put the Factor 70 onto your shiny dome this morning, so I will be quick. Um, get your diaries out if you are a parent um, here today, because I want to quickly update you on the kids camp. And I'm calling it the kids and parents camp. It's not a chance to outsource your childcare for the weekend. The idea is that we'd love to have families, uh, parents, uh, children come together for a very informal camp. If you're not a veteran of camp, you don't know what to do, don't worry about it. We want this to be um, an inclusive weekend that anybody who's never camped before can join in. And it'll be time for the children to connect, to play together. Uh, where the children are playing, parents, you'll hopefully have some downtime as well just to chat to other parents as well. Now, it was on going to be on the weekend of the 17th and 18th of June, but for various reasons, building work that's going on and um, the weather, we've decided to move it forward. So the date for your diary now is the 9th and 10th of September. A lot more families will be back as well who've traveled for the summer, and hopefully it'll be an amazing time when we can get as many people together as possible to camp out on the Saturday night to the Sunday. It might be here on this site here, or we might go elsewhere. More details to follow. Okay, as we're talking about children, let me pray for them as they go off um, to their groups. Um, children, we love you, and we hope you have a great time today. Just stay off the grass, as we reminded you. Um, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this glorious morning, Lord, where... We can see your radiance reflected, Lord, uh, not just in the, in the nature around us, but, uh, but in the lives of individuals who love and follow you. Father, thank you for our young people. Thank you that they've been made in your image. Thank you that you love them. And we pray this morning, Lord, that that message of love and the desire you have to be in relationship with them will be communicated through their teachers. Empower their teachers, Lord. Give them the right words to say. And bless our young people, Lord, as they listen and as they take part in the singing and the many activities. And for us left behind here, Lord, I pray you'd speak through Jeremy by your spirit. Empower him. Give him the right words to say today, Lord, that we might hear your message and it might continue to transform lives this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, yes, children, this is your cue to leave now. Um, new new um, tents you're going to. Please do head out. This is a good opportunity to say hi to someone. Please feel free to give a fist bump, shake a, a few hands here and there. Shall we please rise? Even as we sing this song, Come Thou Found. Come Thou Found of every blessing Tune my heart to sing Thy peace 
streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious song that sung by flaming tongues above praise the mountain fixed upon it mount of thy I was lost, I was lost in utter darkness Till you came and rescued me I was bound by all my sin When your love came and set me free Now my soul can sing a new song now my heart has found a home now your grace is always with me and i'll never be alone come thou found come thou king come thou precious prince of peace hear your bride to you we sing come thou fount of up one more time come thou fount come thou fount come thou king come thou precious prince of peace hear your bride to you we sing come thou fount of our blessing to grace oh to grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wonder lord i feel it prone to Thou God I love, here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Come thou found, come thou king, come thou found, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace. Heal your bride to you we sing. Come thou fount of our blessing. Come thou fount, come thou fount, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace. Heal your bride to you we sing. Come thou fount of our blessing. Amen. You may have your seats. Good morning, church. Good morning again. All right, well, I'm going to have to try to find a spot. Do you mind just moving these back a little bit? In this new arrangement where with my complexion, I don't turn into a lobster. Okay, I, I once had almost, I don't know, second degree burns of, because of a sunburn. Uh, and so I want to try to live as long as I can, so I'm going to try to avoid this sun. But before we get into the Word today, by the way, if you're visiting, my name's Jeremy. I'm one of the pastors here, and uh, I would love to meet you afterwards. We have that welcome table. We'll be around taking tea in this area. But church, change is never easy, is it? We're going to have to get used to this new arrangement that we hope will only be for about four weeks. But you know how sometimes when they say four weeks, you know, contractors will be like, oh yeah, four weeks. That probably means six or eight. We don't know. We'll see. But when you, after the service, if you want to grab your tea and greet some people, see, already I'm going to like move this way because I'm getting hot. Uh, if you want to greet some people, take your tea, walk around, you know, keep your kids and yourself off the grass because this garden, believe it or not, will look better than it ever has been because of the way they're putting grass everywhere. They're fixing all the different patches. But what's going to happen is 
uh, well, they've already taken bits of, of grass from where we have the carol service every year, and they're transplanting that into other parts of the garden. And then they've already carved out the shape of our big tent over there and, and even um, made some space under the, under the grass where they'll put a concrete slab. I think we're hoping Nellie, is Nellie here? I think I see her over there. Is that her? No, I didn't see Nellie. My bad. Um, hopefully this week, they're going to lay that concrete slab, which takes about four weeks to dry completely. Uh, and so then once that happens, we can start the construction of our big tent. So we just ask you, church, to bear with us. Again, change is never easy. When I got here this morning, I thought, okay, there are things I like about this, things I don't like. It's very different. You feel very far away, by the way, um, but we have to contend with the sun, which is a gift as well, isn't it? So it's going to be um, very interesting and different. There's going to be uh, lots of changes going on. So again, church, we're going to be feeling like the Israelites, like these nomads going from tent to tent. We've picked up our tents. We've brought them here. Um, you know, we're just going to see how it works. And then eventually we'll be in our semi-permanent tent because we know we're our permanent home, isn't it? Uh, we are not actually nomads. We are pilgrims on a journey to our final destination. So I think that's all the kind of housekeeping stuff I wanted to share with you before we get into the word. But let me actually begin by praying for that, praying for us as a body to, to love each other well through change. And I think this is actually a way, church, for us to express our unity and our love to each other, to be patient, to be flexible, and to ultimately trust God with what he's doing in this season. So let's pray. Well, Lord, we come before you and we do thank you for the sun. We know that we have been facing some weeks of cold and rain. And of course, for that, we are grateful because of the drought. We are trusting that you, by your gift, have replenished this parched earth. And especially, we pause to pray for northern Kenya and this region where there's been such devastating drought. Lord, we thank you for all of your gifts, even today for this sunshine, for this space where in the transition of this property, we can still have a place to meet. So Lord, would you help us, even keep us from distraction when things are so new and different? Lord, help us right now to focus on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I do notice there are a few younger ones around. If you didn't catch the little note before, we are in our last in a series on the Song of Songs, which is a love poem that's a lot about marital intimacy. I'll, I'll just leave it at that for now. You still have a moment if you want to usher your child to the children's space, but we leave it up to you as a parent. If you'd like for them to hear this content as well, um, that's up to you. It is God's inspired word, and we're grateful for it this morning. Sorry, Victor, I'm just going to move this around because this glare is really intense. That's great. Thanks, bro. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. I love the, the words of that song. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. And that's really what we are getting at today, ultimately, in this final sermon on the Song of Songs. Two weeks ago, Kurt and I talked to you in our Song of Songs series about the illusion of intimacy, namely pornography, the illusion of intimacy. And speaking of Kurt, just a quick pause on that. With his permission, I wanted to alert you the fact that he and his family are away for a few weeks, uh, and today is the memorial service for his father who went to be with the Lord just about a week and a half ago. And so I actually want us to, to pray for him right now and pause for a moment, and as well as anyone else in the congregation who in the last month or so has lost a loved one, maybe a friend or even a distant relative. So let's take a moment to bow our hearts before the Lord to pray for our brother. He's one of the elders of this church as well as anyone else here who may be grieving in any way. Let's pray. Well, Lord, even as we come to you in this book, this poem that is a celebration of life, of intimacy, of passion, of fulfillment, Lord, we taste deeply that this is not our home. Because even though our bridegroom, Lord Jesus, you defeated death, we know that 
Death is ultimately the last enemy to be defeated. And one day you will defeat it finally when you come again to restore all things, to make all things new. So we pause right now to pray for our brother that you would bring comfort to him, to Katrina, to Soraya and Josiah, to mom, to all the family. God, thank you for Mr. Laird and his legacy of service to your kingdom and to the gospel. A missionary for years, decades in Ecuador and Papua New Guinea. God, thank you that right now he is gathered around your throne, worshiping with so many different groups, tribes, and tongues, including those who his ministry touched over those decades. So Lord, would you encourage the whole Laird family with that truth, that picture that is real right now, that his faith is now sight. And Lord, for all those who are grieving the loss of a friend or a loved one, a distant relative perhaps even, Lord, that you would bring comfort and peace. Lord, would you turn our eyes to you now, that we would fix our eyes upon you, Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before you endured the cross. You endured death. And you sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Lord, we come before you. We ask you to open our hearts to receive your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. So I ended that sermon two weeks ago by saying that whatever addiction we might face or whatever struggle or whatever illusion of intimacy, the gospel truth, gospel-soaked truth is that we need to be captured by a better vision. And I'll read the words of that song again, that, that little refrain that I think reveal, demonstrate how we are captured by a better vision. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Because that verse I just quoted in my prayer from Hebrews where Jesus, when he endured the cross, he scorned its shame. He scorned its shame because he took it. And after dying, he rose again in victory, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence, Lord, captured by a better vision. Well, we go from that illusion of intimacy to now the celebration of intimacy where it is being captured by a better vision. Well, today, the, the title of this sermon in the last half of the Song of Songs, what you may know as Song of Solomon, the Song of Songs, chapters 4 to 8, this is the growth of intimacy. But just like our series title, it's also really the celebration of intimacy. A few weeks ago, Pastor Joshua started us off with the expectation of intimacy. Because the couple, the lovers, though their passion was growing, they were not yet married. Well, starting in chapter four, they are now married and the passion really takes off in this erotic, sensual love poem. Visitors, welcome. <laughs> You're like, I picked this week to visit this interesting church. Okay. But that's where we are. By the way, um, on Friday and Saturday, just the last couple days, we had our first ever LVC marriage retreat with 26 couples up at Brackenhurst. And so I'm actually really thankful to God. By the way, if you were at the retreat, can you raise your hand? Yeah, raise up your hand real high. All right, so we got a few here. Others are just completely exhausted. <clears throat> so I'm actually really grateful to God for the timing of the conclusion of this series. That after all of the rain issues and how it caused us to move things around, that now we're ending up this series following that retreat. 
God is really good. So again, starting in chapter 4, the couple is now married, and the passion really takes off in what is nothing less than an erotic love poem. A poem which um, has caused some, some challenges for Jews and Christians throughout history. So for example, Orthodox Jewish young men in some communities were not allowed to read it until age 35. Now, why they picked 35, I have no idea. Because you may be here and you're like 38 or 52 and you're like, hey, it's still, it's still there, okay? So anyway, 35 was the magic age apparently. They had to wait to read this. Then in the 5th century, you had this church father named Cyril of Alexandria. And he was teaching this poem, this book to monks who were, of course, trying to be celibate. Now, like many throughout church history, including in the fifth century, there was a tendency to allegorize what we might think of in this case as over-spiritualizing this book. So again, my picture, he's, he's teaching this to monks who are trying to be celibate for a lifetime. So what Cyril did, Father Cyril, is he, there's this part of the book where the woman describes her lover being to her like a sachet of myrrh, okay, like perfume resting between her breasts. So what Father Cyril did is like, well, you see, what, we, what you have here is uh, Jesus between the Old and the New Testaments. <laughs> and you can just imagine these poor monks. They're like, yep, yep, okay, right, got that, mm-hmm, yep. Nice try, nice try. So no, unlike Cyril and so many Jews and Christians throughout the centuries, Unlike them, we are taking this at face value as a love poem full of deep sensuality and even erotic passion between these lovers who eventually express, express this physical longing and passion within the marriage relationship. So no, <clears throat> unlike many Jews and Christians throughout the centuries, we are following the line of interpretation that takes this at face value. And yet the depth of this poetry in the context of the one big story of the Bible, it beckons us by pointing forward to our deepest longings and to, to where and by whom they will ultimately be met. Why is this book called by most scholars the Song of Songs? Well, it's because it's the best of songs. The best of songs. It's what the commentator Ian Duguid calls friendship on fire. I love that. Friendship on fire. So if you're taking notes, that's kind of the main point. Friendship on fire. And I want to give you four takeaways today. Four takeaways. Friendship, fire, fun, and fulfillment. Friendship, fire, fun, and fulfillment. And Pastor Joshua was really jealous because this is a great alliteration here. He loves these, and I just nailed this one. So the first one, friendship. Chapter 4, you can just listen along. Okay, If you want to turn in your print Bible, feel free. I'm going to be jumping around a bit. It's a bit different to preach from a poem, so we're going to be just jumping around a bit in these four chapters. But in verses 9 and 10 of chapter 4, he says, You have stolen my heart, my sister. My bride, you have stolen my heart. Now, five times the word sister is used. Now, that may seem a little weird at first, a little awkward. Well, this in the context expresses friendship. Since in that ancient time, sibling relationship was the only opposite sex relationship that one could have apart from marriage. So in chapter five, he says, my sister my darling. Well, then in chapter 5, verse 16, the woman, now the wife says, his mouth is sweetness itself. 
And this is before they had toothpaste and breath mints, okay? So, but she's just loving his mouth. His mouth is sweetness itself. He is altogether lovely. This is my beloved. This is my friend, daughters of Jerusalem. She's telling these other women, these friends of hers, the daughters of Jerusalem, as they're called in this poem, this is my friend. But their passionate love is not only based on, but grows in the experience of friendship. And yet, like any newly married couple, and older married couples, they have to confront and overcome selfish indifference. So some will refer to as four different scenes in these last four chapters of the Song of Songs, now that they're married. They have to confront and overcome selfish indifference. We see glimmers of this in chapters five and six. After practicing this sermon, Pastor Joshua helpfully pointed out that sadly, in many contexts, a friend cannot become an eventual marriage partner and a marriage partner ceases to be a friend. How sad is that? Why? Because that's not at all what the Bible teaches. To my single friends here, I hope you haven't tuned out just because this sermon is mainly focused on a married couple and sexual intimacy. Because whether God ordains eventual marriage for you or not, I wonder what your experience is building friendships in the body of Christ with the opposite sex. Is it awkward? Confusing? Seemingly off limits? Perhaps because it's assumed, like in at least a few Hollywood films, that a man and a woman can never truly be friends because sex will just always get in the way. But no, whether single or married, as women and men in the church, we all need to understand each other first, is what the author Amy Bird calls sacred siblings. Sacred siblings, brother and sister in Christ. And to my single friends, perhaps desiring to be married, to have a companion. What would it look like for you to start with this medium-sized church and see especially other single people first as brother or sister in Christ? What might it look like to go from there to building deep friendships and to treasure those, whether they lead to marriage or not? But perhaps some will. You see, I lament that some seem to feel that they simply cannot find a companion in the local church. Unless it's some mega church where you're just kind of easier to be anonymous. And so if it doesn't work out, the stakes are much lower. Look, I, I get that it can be tricky or awkward to start dating someone in a church the size of LVC and feel like if it doesn't work out, then one of us is going to have to feel like we have to change churches. But let me ask you an honest question. Does that say something about dating and the size of churches? Or does it, have, does it say something about a struggle that many have to build healthy relationships, friendships with the opposite sex, and to date eventually in a healthy way where if either person feels like it's not the way God is leading, it doesn't have to stop them from being brother and sister in Christ in the local church. That's the foundation. Are we together? Maybe not. But one thing that we will never do in this church is what I've heard stories about, where pastors lament so much, namely, and this is just being very frank here, the imbalance of godly women, often into their 30s and 40s, who desire to get married and wonder where all the godly single men are. That's a big issue. And thus, many feel like dating apps are their only option. 
Now, don't get me wrong. There is nothing inherently wrong with those. And in fact, we have a few godly couples in LVC who met through an app and got married. But given the desperation that, frankly, many tend, seem to tend to feel when turning to dating apps, sisters and brothers, can I just caution you and ask you to be honest with yourself? Even if that good-looking and interesting person puts Christian in their profile, what steps will you take to discern if they actually love Jesus and want to passionately follow him or if they're just wearing a label? Because it might get them a few more likes. I get that it is not easy at all to meet and marry someone in a local church context. And look, I, I confess that I'm up here and I can only empathize, I can only imagine, and even that, not very well. Because I didn't have to date much by God's grace. Tamara and I met in university through the Christian Union, and I was 23, she was 22 when we got married. So I realize if you're here and you're 30 and 40 and you've been single for a long time and you're just desiring to have a companion, that it's probably hard to hear me talk about this. But I hope that you receive my words of care, concern, and even affection and love for you as one of your pastors. That we are for you. That we want to lament with you because of this desire and this longing that's being unfulfilled. And to trust God with you for the future that he has for you. Whatever he ordains. Consider what it might look like to cultivate sacred siblings, friends, and deep community in this church in such a way that it's much easier to know if someone is really devoted to Jesus and then to proceed on that foundation. I know it's easier said than done, but could you even ask the Lord, talk to each other about what that can look like and to pray for that. Okay, so that was friendship. And now with friendship on fire, we turn to fire, our second takeaway. Friendship and now fire. So early in chapter one, the friends, this community around them in Jerusalem are cheering them on. They say, eat friends and drink, drink your fill of love. That might seem a little bit awkward. It's like those really awkward and um, like, uh, what's the word? Either unhealthy or just inappropriate people at a wedding like younger who like say really inappropriate things as the couple's like heading away from the wedding. This is not that at all. They are just celebrating the fact that they are now married and they are drinking their fill of love. One of them says in chapter five, I am faint with love. They are on fire, the power of this love. It's like they want to faint. And now we're in this scene where they are intended for pleasure. We have passion and pleasure. And then in chapter 8, we hear the woman say, this powerful few verses. The woman says, Under the apple tree I roused you. There your mother conceived you. There she who is in labor gave birth to you. Under the apple tree. Now, I don't know if it's ever a good idea in the heat of passion to mention your spouse's mother. I, I don't see how that's a good idea. <laughs> But in this poem, she does so. And, and actually what she's doing, she's so thankful for the fact that he exists. He's alive. And apparently they're being passionate under the same tree where he was conceived. It's a bit weird, okay? But maybe they're in a village. I don't know. But verse 6, place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death. It's jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like a blazing fire. There's that fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot sweep it away. If one were to give all the wealth of one's house for love, it would be utterly scorned. Did you hear that? It burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Well, but later, in fact, three times in these eight chapters, they say, I charge you, 
do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. I charge you, I exhort you, I instruct you, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Why? Because it is right to desire this, but at the right time. Because, again, as Do Good writes, he says, quote, A Christian view of sex, as depicted in the song's counsel to the young people of Jerusalem, is not about abstaining, it is about waiting for the right time and context. For an experience that is so overwhelmingly beautiful and powerful that only marriage can properly contain it. Did you hear that? Let me read that last part again. It's not about abstaining. It is about waiting for the right time and context. For an experience that is so overwhelmingly beautiful and powerful that only marriage can properly contain it. And that's why the pattern of the Bible, the message of the Bible is that consummation comes after covenanting. Consummation follows covenanting. It is worth the fight. It is worth the wait. And here, I just want to say a word to those who, who maybe, again, you're, you're struggling. You've been single for maybe your whole life. And our desire is always to express grace and redemption to all. And so whatever you have experienced in this area, whatever brokenness, whatever shame, whatever guilt, whatever perhaps even sin you're in right now, that there is forgiveness, healing, and redemption. There's grace. There's more mercy in Him than sin in us. But our desire to always communicate grace and redemption should not decrease our desire to encourage, yes, even virgins here in our congregation to wait for that special day. Let's not be afraid that even in this crazy media, entertainment saturated culture, let's not be afraid to say to our teenagers, it is worth the wait. Even if you did not, even if you look back and you have some pain and brokenness and regret, to still be able to say to them, it is worth the wait. There is a power and a beauty in looking into the eyes of a spouse and saying, with you only and you alone have I shared this gift. That's a gift that we want to be able to, to, to give for our kids to be able to experience, isn't it? For any of us here. But in whatever our story is, to know that there is grace and redemption and healing. You heard my story a few weeks ago of my own brokenness and the healing that God has brought in my life. There's also the chance to change course, to enter into a genuine period of waiting, which is also a way to experience God's redemption. We've had a number of couples experience that. Perhaps in, when they enter engagement to say, all right, we're going to enter a new genuine period of waiting and to experience God's healing and redemption. And if you have deep regrets, guilt and shame in this area because you didn't wait or you haven't waited, there is good news. The same God who says that romantic love is as strong as death didn't just inspire powerful poetry. He showed us the depth of love by sending Christ, our bridegroom, who tasted death for us because of his great love for us. And he casts our sins as far as the east is from the west. All right, so that was friendship and fire. And now thirdly, fun. Yes, fun. The third scene of growing intimacy in this marriage relationship is the nurture of love. So the nurture of love can be fun. It is fun. Again, Duguid says that poetry is the art of condensation expressing the maximum meaning in the minimum number of words. And this is part of the skill of poetry. Now, sadly, I didn't, I didn't gain, I didn't learn an appreciation of poetry until later in life. And part of what I love about it, what I've come to appreciate, is that it forces me to slow down. Because you see how these poets 
like Duguid says, express the maximum meaning in the minimum number of words. And words are beautiful things. In fact, our eternal almighty creator inspired that his message to us would come in the form of words, passed down faithfully and reliably over centuries, millennia. Well, part of the skill of poetry, just like the poetry of the Psalms, can capture the range of human emotions across all time and places. So this poetry about romance, marriage, and sex is meant to take the reader deeper and higher to glory in God's good gift. And church, that's why we avoid crass, shallow, and simplistic applications that sadly some pastors have done in very public teachings. Some have even been featured on podcasts where sadly many people have been hurt. Because some pastors have taken these, teachers have said that certain images in the book must mean certain body parts or sexual acts. Maybe. But see, I think that's to actually cheapen the depth of this poetry. So it's not for any pastor or teacher to get that explicit from the pulpit. But within the right context, it's for you, the reader, to allow this rich poetry to stir your heart and your mind and submit that to the Spirit who inspired this poetry. And this is for anyone to read. I think even children can read this. It might be a little confusing, a little awkward. But I remember reading this as a child and going, I have no idea what that's about, but... I'm moving on to my Bible reading plan to the next book. But married couples even, read this together. And it is a beautiful, powerful, poetic book. Now about this fun in marital intimacy, it's precisely the body of the male and the female that attract, that are attracting the most lavish praise. There is much delight here in the body and there's quite powerful and beautifully descriptive imagery. And yet, yet for all the glorious description of the lover's bodies in the Song of Songs, do you know what gets the most attention? It's the faces and the eyes. The faces and the eyes. These windows to the soul that perhaps more than anything reveal how we, male and female, were made in the image of God. And that leads us to our greatest longing, hope, and fulfillment. Now, married couples, just a quick point of application here on this topic of fun. Take a cue from this ancient book of sensual and erotic poetry and cultivate a fun playfulness to express your appreciation, affirmation, and desire for each other. Yes, one of your pastors is giving you permission to do that, okay? Write little notes to each other, even on paper. Do you still know how to do that? Even to just take your pen and write. But why not use the medium of WhatsApp and even redeem it by being playful with your spouse on it? It's even encrypted. I thought some of you might laugh at that and... You know, maybe, you know, the Russians or the CIA are able to tap in, but just don't worry about it. Just move on, okay? But seriously, cultivate a playfulness. Take a cue from this book. Do you send messages to each other throughout the day or leave little notes for each other of affirmation, appreciation, and even desire and longing? That was friendship. Excuse me. Yeah, friendship, fire, That was fun, and now we have fulfillment. The author Ed Shaw talks perhaps the most profoundly that I've read about how marriage and sex are temporary. We see that in Jesus' teaching in Mark chapter 12, that marriage and sex are temporary. In the kingdom to come, on the new heavens and the new earth, we won't need it. He says this, The be-all and end-all of many people's lives here on earth is not the be-all and end-all of life in God's new creation. Marriage vows made until death do us part have set the right 
best before date for marriage. It is ended by death. Why? Because you no longer need to watch the trailer when the film itself has been released. Listen to that again. Because you no longer need to watch the trailer when the film itself has been released. I don't know about you, but there's times when you watch a trailer to a film. And it's so good that you watch it over and over. It was like this for me and my family with Wakanda Forever. Probably one of the most powerful trailers ever with that, that version of No Woman, No Cry. And just this absolutely powerful trailer. We watched it like 10 times. Well, thankfully for Wakanda Forever, the film itself was better than the trailer. You know, there could be times where part of why this metaphor makes sense is you can watch a trailer and really like it. And you're like, oh, I'm going to go see that film. And then, you, you know, you go drop like 800 shillings on the film and you're like, I can't believe I just dropped 800 shillings because they packed everything, every good piece of the film into those two minutes in the trailer. See, we could be deceived into thinking that, that, oh man, that this trailer we have here on earth is just way better than the real thing. See, that's just not the case. That's not at all what Holy Scripture communicates to us and what is truly actually awaiting us. When the trailer we're experiencing now is only a preview truly of what will come one day in the new heavens and the new earth that will go on, a film that will go on forever and ever and only get better and better where we will be ultimately fulfilled. C.S. Lewis has one of my favorite quotes of all time. I wish we had a screen to put it up on, but I want you to put on your listening ears and focus to hear the power of what he says here. He says, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. Not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by an offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. We are far too easily pleased. See, this, this book would tell us that, oh, there is deep pleasure and joy and even a kind of fulfillment in the kind of intimacy that God has reserved for marriage. But you see, if we only, even if I can say settle for that, or in whatever our area of brokenness, whatever our longings or desires come to, be, to become fixated on sex in this life, that we become those whose desires are not too strong, but too weak. And we are far too easily pleased. Did you catch that metaphor? Imagine this child who is there in a slum and he's really content with making mud pies because he cannot imagine the offer of a holiday at the coast. Oh, let's not, let's not have that said to be true of us in life. Psalm 16, we're going to close with this, and I want you to listen again carefully. If you want to turn there in a print Bible or your Bible app, you can do so. I think this other piece of poetry, also from the Old Testament, helps us to get a glimpse of this fulfillment that is ultimately awaiting us. Psalm chapter 16, verse 5, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my right, excuse me, even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because 
You will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. See, that verse was ultimately fulfilled in Jesus. And because of his death and resurrection, then pointing forward, the psalmist is able to say, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Oh, sisters and brothers, that is being captured by a better vision. If you have trouble being captured by that, perhaps because you are distracted by what this world and your flesh seem to offer you. Can you even pray and ask the Holy Spirit to make this real to you, to let this sink in? You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. That's fulfillment. That's what's coming. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we confess that because of our tendency to idolatry, to go after other things besides you, to satisfy our longings and desires and to seek fulfillment, Lord, that we are far too easily pleased. Lord, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until we find our rest in you. So, Lord, would you captivate our hearts, whether we are here, married, single, separated, divorced, whatever station in life, whatever background, Lord, would you draw our hearts to you to transform us, to ravish us with your love, the only perfect love to which this book of beautiful poetry can only point. Lord, do the work that only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's rise and respond with this song. The words are timely. I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to his embrace. You are good, you are good When there's nothing good in me Play for all to see You are light, you are light When the darkness closes in You are hope, you are hope You have covered all my sin You are peace You are peace, you are peace When my fear is crippling true you are true even in my wandering you are joy you are joy you're the reason that i sing you are life you are life in you death has lost its sting i'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the reaches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever reign. You are more. will ever say you are Lord you are Lord all creation will proclaim you are here you are here in your presence
presence I'm made whole. You are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. I'm running to your arms. Oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The reaches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reigns. I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The reaches of your love will always be enough nothing compares to your embrace light of the world forever reigns my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing, heart will sing no other name, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing, my heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus. I'm running to your arms. Oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The reaches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your end. Light of the world forever reigns. I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The reaches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever. Amen. The church, if something has come up for you in this sermon, whatever your station in life and you would like prayer, if you've got questions, if you've got burdens on your heart and you want to pray with someone, talk to any of us who've been up here, any elders, pastors who are present. Our prayer team would also love to pray with you as always. It would be now in this new arrangement, in this back corner over here where I'm pointing. The prayer, someone from the prayer team will be waiting to pray with you. We would love to do that. Visitors, we would also love to meet you. So back towards the entrance of this fenced area, the basketball court, is the welcome desk. So do come there, find out any information about our church, and we would love to meet you. Also, we encourage you, as always, in this new reality, until we get a big screen and a projector, please do take your song sheets with you or throw them in a rubbish bin. Also, do take your belongings with you. We've been collecting lots of things from this space. And so at the welcome table is also a lost and found. So check that for anything that you may have left. But now receive this benediction, beloved. Go into this week following the God who counsels you, the God who longs to instruct you, to ravish you with his pure and perfect love. Keep your eyes always on him. Go into this week and may your heart be glad and your tongue rejoice, knowing the eternal pleasures that await you. So therefore go and experience even a taste of the joy that is coming to you one day. Go in his power and his presence and his peace. Amen. Go in peace, church. We love you. Hope to see you next week.